cap and trade is both a political and economic solution to pollution, I had to look at it from two different disciplines of economics and political science, because you need a governmental authority that creates policies, but you also need a market to be created, um, which is very important for the exchange of these permits. Um, so in order to do my research, I um, looked at or I used concepts from both economics and political science, and I did a basic literature review. And when I did this, I identified six factors that could potentially affect the success of the European Union emissions trading scheme. These were um, the amount of pollution that each country in the EU vowed to um, reduce by, by the end of 2012, um, the economic growth of each country, the wealth, um, also the type of economy that they each country has, if it's more service oriented or if it produces products and manufactures instead. Um, I also looked at the control of corruption, which is very important. If um, the system is to work, emissions have to be audited, everything has to be um, controlled, there has to be actual fines for these companies if they don't follow the rules. If they can pay off the government and not pay their fines, that is not a working system. Um, and of course, government, government effectiveness. How well does the government implement all these policies? Because there's a lot of policies in the capital trade system that's complex. So it's important for a government to effectively be able to um, implement the system itself. Um, so what I did was I collected statistical data on all these factors. And um, I looked at them in relationship to compliance or to the rate of how many companies in each country was following the rules and complying by turning in the number of permits equal to how much they're actually emitting. Um, now the bridging strategy or the interdisciplinary strategy um, in my research was the attempt to create a complex multi-causal explanation for success, specifically in the European Union emissions treating scheme. Um, now, in conclusion, I actually did not find strong relationships between the um, factors and the rate of how many companies were complying um, in each country. Now there's several reasons for this. Uh, one reason is the fact that compliance was actually very high. Over 95% of companies in every single country did follow the rules, did turn in the number of permits they were supposed to. Um, so there wasn't a lot of variability in the lack of compliance or compliance. Um, at the same time, this was the first year that the system was implemented. And as time goes on, the cap becomes more stringent. Companies, uh, or I should say the government, will slowly move this line down every year. So it'll be harder and harder for companies to reduce their emissions um, or their pollution. And therefore, it'll be the, the, permit, the price of the permits might go up. And it'll become a lot more complicated. Um, and in that case, over time, um, the companies might have a harder time complying and following the, the rules that they're supposed to be following. Um, and also, there was some limited data um, on compliance. I, I could tell which companies were following the rules and which ones weren't, but I, could, I had to treat them all equally. I couldn't look at them uh, based on how much they were polluting over their limit or how many permits they were short. This information specifically was not available. Um, so that was one factor that could have added variability, but because I could not um, collect this data, I guess the uh, relationships between my factors and compliance um, was non-existent um, based on the research that I did. And um, as time passes, there will be more information available because I did this for 2008. And starting actually this month, the data for 2009 will be out for all the European countries on how they did um, last year in lowering emissions and how many permits they turned in, how the, how the overall um, pollution is going down or increasing in each country and all, overall in the EU. So as time passes, there'll be more information and it'll be easier to um, measure different variables. And um, in conclusion, um, I think if I had done this again, I would definitely get more experience in statistics um, and how to uh, measure variables because this semester I actually um, took my methods course at the same time as doing this project, so it made it a little more difficult. But um, in, in the future, I would definitely want to have better experience in how to measure these types of factors.